everyone, Coach Stefan Rudolph coming to you straight from recoveredcoaching.com here in beautiful Reno, Nevada. Enjoying the morning sunrise, the ducks flying in, cool crisp breeze going in as well, in me and through me. Used to the San Diego weather here, but enjoying the uh, trip out here, visiting the parents. And wanted to touch base today, leave a good video for you on health, wellness, personal growth as I usually do. Check out my website. Please subscribe, like, and share on my page here. Um, a lot of this has to do with health and wellness, personal growth. Been taking some notes in my uh, journal here, so I wanted to pass on a little tidbit of information about uh, the areas in life that I um, want to focus on more about choosing the mood before the mood chooses you. Uh, much of this came when I had epilepsy and I had seizures in life and was struggling for many years after divorce, after alcoholism set in to its fullest, uh, DUIs, jail, bankruptcy, everything, and my life had collapsed from going to the from the top to the bottom uh, within a three-year period, and I had to finally just choose my option of either giving up on life or giving into the fact that I had to change, had to grow, had to prosper. One of the areas, choose the mood before the mood chooses you. Uh, that may be kind of basic for some of you that hear this, but choose the mood before the mood chooses you. So waking up today, for example, I'm feeling that there's a lot going on in my life and I'm trying to think of different areas to goals that I have to achieve, work that I have to do, places I have to be next week. And it can get a little stressful, as many of you know, out there in the morning, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., you start thinking about next week, next month, next year, the bills, uh, COVID, everything going on, a little stress, a little anxiety. And then it starts setting you down. It sets me down sometimes, but then I instantly try to do Control-Alt-Delete, reset your mind, reset your life. Part of this was choosing the mood of prosperity, of happiness, of lovingness, of kindness, visiting my parents up here, and in this time, uh, being able to stay positive throughout all this. So I chose the mood, and I got up, took a cold shower, got dressed, and conquered the day right away. That's within a 20-minute period. If I had laid in bed, sat there and thought, stressed, anxiety, you know, for one hour, two hours, I, I've had a friend in the past that was doing that, that complained, not complained, but just came to me about the mornings being really rough for him. Uh, from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. to when he got up, and then finally... The, the day got better, but instead of the day getting better, get the heart to get yourself better. Believe in success, believe in happiness, believe in prosperity in yourself. Choose that mood before the mood chooses you. Yesterday's loss should not equal today's sorrow. So if you've had a hard yesterday, if you had a, um, a hard difficulty that you're going through, yesterday's loss should not be today's sorrow. Keep that in mind. Part of this that I'm going to be reading to you is just notes that I've taken here. Um, don't let the negativities of yesterday equal be become your today. Don't let the negativity of yesterday become your today. Yesterday's hardship should not equal today's results or tomorrow's results. Better yourself today, better yourself tomorrow. Never let yesterday make your today or influence your tomorrow. Somebody does something for you and that makes you happy. So if you're waiting for today's happiness to come from somebody or something out there, think about this. Somebody that does something for you and makes you happy, that's great. But do something for yourself first and make yourself happy. Do something for yourself first by programming your mind, programming your life to say this is a day of prosperity. This is a day of happiness. This is a day of results. This is what you want to be doing. The outside influence versus the inside influence. The inside influence should come first. The inside influence that comes first in my life is meditation, awareness, and prayer. Meditating on scenes like this. Deep breathing techniques at the lake, at the river here. Awareness, attitude, those are areas of awareness of what's around me, what's going in me, how I'm eating. Um, attitude, choose your attitude, choose your results. So be in control of your own mindset, be in control of how you're seeing life how you're feeling in life before those feelings overtake you and before those results come forward. Be in control of yourself. Outside influence versus inside influence. So that area, if you're waiting for something to happen on the outside, it's never going to happen on the inside. Be the inside first. Somebody's going to come to you and say, hey, you look great today or, you know, hey, I got this opportunity. They start talking to you. 
then you start feeling a little bit happier. But once that opportunity is gone, once that person has gone, that, that inside happiness is gone. So keep it on the inside. Be happy with yourself. Tell yourself positive results about where you're at, what you're doing, how life is going. Uh, anything and everything it takes to just find the, the minimal part of your happiness in life. Man's Search for Meaning is a book by um, with the author. I'll have to look up the author, but look up Man's Search for Meaning. I read that book, and it was amazing about his trials in life, what he went through when he was in the Nazi concentration camp in the back in the 1930s and lived through the hell of, of the worst hell anybody could go through. And he taught me through his book, through his writings, that this is something, Viktor Frankl is the author, Viktor Frankl. He taught me that this is something that you have to grow on the inside in order to be happy on the outside. The last part of this area, don't drown your sorrows, face your sorrows. Uh, be giving thanks, giving love, giving life all day long. So don't drown your sorrows, face your sorrows. The past part of my life that I had to face was that of overcoming epilepsy, as I mentioned in the beginning, overcoming alcoholism, overcoming addiction, overcoming escapism, and overcoming the negative influence of others in my life that were not treating me well, doing well. It's just a, it was a negative area. So I had to face my sorrows from my past and realize what was what was bothering me, the obstacles in my life, whether it was my my biological father not being there, things in my life that were going wrong, drinking my way out of prosperity, out of a marriage, out of success, out of happiness, drinking my way, that influence more, you got ducks flying everywhere, that influence more of the epilepsy that came back, more of the seizures, more of the um, car accidents, two car accidents, two hernia surgeries, a pulmonary embolism, three endoscopies, uh, brain surgery that didn't work, uh, divorce, as I mentioned, bankruptcy, everything. I had to face those and realize that I was the instigator of my past, and what happened in my past is now in my present at that time, and it's going to influence my future. So by correcting my mistakes and, and acknowledging them and being thankful for them and, for, and giving forgiveness for people that did something to me or weren't there for me, or just instead of pointing the finger out, I, I looked at myself within. Those are areas that I'm seeing the beauty in life out here every day now. And this beauty's always been there, but for many who struggle in life, many who are unable to face life, this beauty is not seen because they're not happy within. You gotta be happy within, love yourself before you can love others. The key to happiness in your future lies in your past. So by facing your past, unlocking past sorrow, past pain, this is the key to future happiness. This is the key to present happiness. This is the key to what was the key to my unlocking my ability to grow in life and become a, a new man, a new person in life, and have a whole new life. So I just wanted to pass this message on. Hopefully that's helping everybody. Again, my name's Stefan Rudolph, Coach Stefan. Look me up on uh, YouTube here, some more videos, recoveredcoaching.com to hear my story. I also have an epilepsy story. If you have been influenced or know somebody influenced by epilepsy, brain surgery, seizures, anything else, go to epilepsycoaching.com. That also goes to a page on the website of Recovered Coaching, but you'll see my story on epilepsycoaching.com. And be the leader within and also influence others. Just be happy for who you are, what you have in life, and keep on growing in life. Again, it's Coach Stefan Rudolph coming to you straight from beautiful Reno, Nevada here on this crisp, chilly day in November. Being blessed and highly thankful for all that is in my life, that has been in my life, and that continues to come in my life each and every day. Enjoy the moment of now. Own the moment of now, and you've won the moment of life. N-O-W. Peace.